In the land of Urbania, the trains all run on time, and everything is looked after by the National Board of Benefactors. The benefactors know, and have known for centuries, what is best for the citizens of Urbania, or at least what is best for most of the people most of the time. They have also tended to believe, although occasionally they have had heated debates on the subject, that the mass of the citizens haven't the slightest idea what is good for either for them or for the nation as a whole. The people, therefore, need to be guided. And who better to guide them than those who have always had the greatest happiness of the greatest number constantly in mind? Everything, so the benefactors tell everyone who will listen, is a matter of education and social progress. Once upon a time, would anyone believe it today, Urbania was a savage and chaotic place full of dissatisfaction, violence, free thinking, disease, and unreason. Then the Great Enlightenment came, and the basic problem was uncovered. That problem, of course, was raw human nature, a wayward quality that human beings could well do without. Raw human nature was like a wilderness. Well-governed human nature was like a beautiful garden, and the benefactors came together to cultivate that garden. Gardens, however, sometimes have weeds in them, and the weeds in the Urbanian garden were the three great classes of difficult people. The benefactors, however, created three institutions to take care of the three problem groups, and these institutions function smoothly, by and large, to this day. The first of the institutions is the prison, a place to hold and treat those difficult people found guilty of crime. The second of the institutions is the hospital, a place to hold and treat those difficult people found guilty of illness. And the third of the institutions is the school, a place to hold and treat those difficult people found guilty of both youth and ignorance. It is, say the benefactors, these three institutions which marks, marks the greatness of modern Urbania, and which have taken its citizens from the depths of chaos to the heights of good order and social harmony. The three great institutions work so well, most of the time, because they are built in accordance with the fundamental principle of Urbanian life, the square. The nearer that everything comes to rectilinear perfection, the better life is for everyone, or so, or so the theory goes. <clears throat> Roundness, though of course not outlawed, is therefore reduced to a minimum. Thus, the three institutions, in their various realizations throughout the land, tend, like so much else in Urbania, to be oblong. The squares of cell and classroom, ward and wardrobe, the rectangles of doors, windows, corridors, vestibules, stairways, elevators, tables, desks, cupboards, lockers, and boxes. On many a wall are affixed neat sheets of paper listing the rules and regulations appropriate to a place pinned up squarely where everyone with the ability to read can peruse them. Time is mar marked off not just in minutes and hours, but re-squared into periods for this and that period of time. Time to get up, 324. Time for your apparent, Mrs. Gummidge. Time for your arithmetic class, young Postlethwaite. It is also organized that, just as the benefactors intend, the inmates of the three institutions soon become ill at ease in surroundings that are not square and are uncertain what to do when time, when time, with time that has the wrong shape. <clears throat> Although it is not widely conceded, however, there are some flies in the benevolent ointment of Urbania. Whisper it, but many of the three P's, the prisoners, patients, and pupils, do not always allow themselves to benefit from their time in one or the other institutions, a fact which, which, occasional, which occasioned great sadness and occasional bouts of black rage among the benefactors. Many criminals go back to crime when their time is up inside. Many patients stubbornly remain ill and even elect to die both inside and outside their clinics. And in large numbers of pupils, though they are gratifyingly and permanently cured of their youth, are not at all cured of their ignorance. The benefactors and their friends, however, have found the ideal solution to this problem. They build larger institutions, keep more people in them for longer periods, and declare that the institutions mark the greatness of Urbania, having taken the citizens from the depths of chaos to the heights of good order and social harmony. Any, anyone supposing otherwise is quietly taken off to a fourth institution that no one ever talks about. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear.